throughout this series, I've shown you how to use RESTIC for backing up and managing your backups using the command line. In practice, though, you'll want to automate the process with scripts. Let's take some of the things we've done in this series. Create a script that will automatically back up to the cloud. In this case, Amazon S3. To get started, I have a folder at the root of my C drive called Backup. This is where I'm going to store all the scripts that will be used to automate the backup. Currently, I've got two text files here, include.txt, which includes all the folders that I'd like to back up, and exclude.txt, which contains folders I don't want to back up, along with a file. I'm going to be backing up my documents, music, pictures, and videos, but I will not be backing up the Adobe folder, this ABC Labs folder, and this other folder within my documents. I don't want the captures folders in my videos, and I don't want the camera roll and saved pictures folders in my pictures folder. I also don't want this image in my pictures folder in my backup. So essentially I'm just going to be backing up this wallpaper image in my Brave folder in pictures. Note that I don't have a full path to this file, so any file with this name and this file type will be excluded from the backup. With my include and exclude setup, I'll go ahead in my backup folder and create a batch file. You can use a PowerShell script, but I think it'll be easier for some people to use a batch file. I'll just call it backup.bat. And from this folder, I'll go ahead and open up VS Code since I like to use that to edit my text files or scripts. But before we start putting our backup script here, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Let's go ahead and create a repository. And again, I'm going to be creating this repository on an Amazon S3 bucket. So S3 colon S3.AmazonAWS.com. We'll have the bucket name. And I will call the repository media like we've had in previous videos. And init. And create our repository. That's done. Let's go ahead and work in this batch file. First thing I'll do is do echo off to tell the terminal not to repeat what's being put in the script. And then we'll do restic minus R followed by the repository. We're going to run the backup command. And I'm going to tell restic to include files from our include.txt. And I exclude. Remember that this I exclude is case insensitive. So it's going to ignore upper and lower case letters and file names. And we're telling Restic to exclude all files inside of this exclude.txt. From here, I'm going to append the tag multimedia, and I'll set the host to desktop. I'm going to set some tuning options by using read concurrency, and I'll set that to 10. And since this is an S3 backend, I'll use the option S3 connections, and I'll set that to 8. And I'm checking my environment variables, and I see that I already have rested compression set. So I don't need to add that option. But if you didn't have compression set in the environment variables, you would append compression max or whatever type of compression you want. I don't need to do that here. What I will do is append the option verbose. So RESTIC will print out what's happening on the screen after it's done and dry run so we can test the script out before we actually run it and then pause so it doesn't close the terminal window when the script runs the next file i'd like to create is a forget batch file and this will run after the backup script is complete i'll call it forget.bat we'll do echo all and i'll just go ahead and copy everything here make things quicker and what we want to do is replace all of this except for verbose and dry run and I'm going to replace that with forget followed by our retention policy for this backup I'm going to use the retention policy of keep within daily seven days keep within weekly for one month and keep within monthly for three years so we'll be keeping daily snapshots for seven days We'll be keeping weekly snapshots for a month. We'll be keeping monthly snapshots for three years. I'm also going to set group by to none so that the retention policy will take effect on all snapshots regardless of host name and path. We'll save that and now create another file. And I'll call this prune 
that. Now notice we don't have the prune option set in our forget because instead what I'm going to do is run the prune operation separately from forget. And this is simple enough. All we have to do is just replace everything here with prune. Now, if you didn't want to have a separate prune function, you could simply append the prune option to your forget command, like so. And when you run your forget operation, this will go ahead and permanently remove any deleted snapshot data. But I like to have my forget and prune operations separate, so I'm going to have a separate file or script for my prune operations. This is a little bit more flexible, so you can run the forget, say, once a week, maybe run the prune batch file once a month, however you want to do it. Keep in mind that the prune operation, depending on the size of the backup, will be taxing on the system and could take a long time. And the next file I like to add is a check batch file. And what this will do is when the backup is complete, we're going to run the check command and log out any results from the check command. So what I'll do here is again, just copy what we have here, paste it here. And instead of the prune command, we're going to run check. And I'm going to tell Rustic to read the data. This is going to make Rustic run a thorough check of the repository. And then I'm going to log that output out to a text file in my documents folder in a text file called check log. And this will tell us if something is wrong with our repository. Save that. Now, the way we have these files set up, we can run each of these commands separately. But for our automated script, we want to run the backup, the forget, and the check command on the daily and run the prune command maybe once a week or something like that. So I'll create one more file and call it auto run or auto backup. And in this file, we're just going to tell the command line to call our backup, our forget, and check scripts. And then pause. So this is the script that's actually going to be ran in our task scheduler task. And it's going to call backup bat. And when that's done, it's going to run this script. And when that's done, it's going to run this script. Now we've got this pause here. We can go ahead and remove it actually from these else it won't continue and now what I can do is come in here and let's try to run our auto backup and see what happens just go ahead in my terminal here and drag the file or double click however you want to do it and we see our auto backup batch is running now we got dry run appended on here so nothing is actually being taken place so the backup script completed, and now it's running our retention policy. And it's complete. If I look at my documents, we can see our log was updated. So our mock backup ran successfully. And now all we need to do is create a task in Windows Task Scheduler to run this script at certain times. I can go ahead and remove the dry run since I know that the backup works successfully and will back up the files that I'd like it to back up. I'll go over and open up Task Scheduler. And in Task Scheduler, we'll go ahead and create a basic task. And I'll call it Backup. See, I already have one created. So let me go ahead and delete this old one from the last video. So we'll call it Backup. I'll have this run daily at 12 a.m. It's fine. I'll just set it to the next day. And we want to start a program and we're going to locate our auto backup script. I'll hit next. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this and modify the priority and set the priority to one so it have high priority. Then I'm going to delete the backup task and re-import it with the new priority set. And we're going to have to go back to properties so we can set some additional 
conditions. So we're gonna have this run daily. Some other options you might find interesting is how many times you wanna repeat this per hour. And we wanna check run tasks as soon as possible after a scheduled task has been missed. So we wanna check that and okay. I wanna create another task and I'll call boom. And this I will have run a weekly. I have that set at 1 a.m. every one week, maybe on Sundays. And again, we're going to start a script. We're going to run our prune batch file. And so every day at 12 a.m., we're going to run our backup, which will back up our file to Amazon S3, run our retention policies, and check our backup. Then every Sunday, we'll run our prune command to permanently delete any data from any removed snapshots. Let's go ahead and run this task and it's actually already running because at the time of I'm recording this video it's actually 12 a.m. so the backups are already going ahead with the script which is actually kind of nice. So our backup is running and when this is done we'll come back and check our repository on Amazon S3. Alright the backup is completed and it shows us it's written this much data to the repository. It's ran our retention policies and it kept our first snapshot because of these reasons and it backed up these files. Let's open up another tab here and in that snapshot I'm going to run ls on latest and we can see all of the files that we backed up files that we did not want backed up which is especially important when we're dealing with the cloud. There are many different ways you can set up a backup script for RESTIC and I like this method because it gives you the ability to run each command separately. However, if you want a more condensed script, you could create a single script to handle everything for you. I'll go ahead and create a script called single backup. And in this file, I'll just copy our backup command, our forget command, and our check command. And in our forget command, I'll apply the prune option to forget and prune. And this condenses all of our tasks into one batch file that when ran will back up our files, forget and prune the data, and check the health of the backup. So with the use of batch files or even PowerShell scripts, you have a lot of flexibility with how you run RESTed. Over the years, I've used many different backup programs, all with graphical user interfaces, and I've always had some sort of issues with them. Whether it be corrupted backups, poor performance, speed, lack of features, horrible pricing structures, and so on. Rustic has been the one backup program that does just about everything I want in a program while being rock solid, fast, performant, and free. It's one of many command line based backup programs along with Rclone, Rsync, Copia, and Borg but it's the only one that's purposefully designed for backup that works with Windows while also having a simple command line interface. In addition to this series, I encourage you to read the RESTIC documentation and use the RESTIC help commands to get more information about how each command works. There's also the RESTIC forum, which has a very active community, and the dev is also active in responding to questions. I have other videos on RESTIC and plan to make more videos in the future. While there's videos on RESTIC on YouTube, I didn't see any full guides and that's what inspired me to create this series. So hopefully you come away learning a thing or two. 